we had a leopard it's very thick he's moving through the block now i just want to call it in on the radio stations have relocated on Mvula. Um, we are just on the southern side of the first dip of Gallego shortcut and uh, he's mobile now in a southeasterly direction we're just going off road we're sort of between the shortcut road on the shortcut and just a little bit further uh, east of that northeast I'll try and keep up with him Right, okay, just calling it in. Wonderful, how cool is this? Right? Alice, are you impressed that we managed to find him again? I am impressed. And Sebastian's impressed. Peyton, Peyton, you said that you, you thought he may have given us the slip. You're quite right. I thought that he had given us the slip. And I was just about to say, right, we're giving up. We're moving out of the area now. We are going elsewhere. We'll go and find Tingana. So, Alice, if you'd like to tell Ali if she wants to go back to Tingana, she's more than welcome to. I'm going to try and stay with this man for as uh, long as we can. He's just about to walk past an old buffalo carcass, which I presume the lions had had many months ago. See how he's now changed direction completely. So we were going straight east, he's now going south. My goodness, he's really giving us the run around. I'm hoping he goes straight towards Galago Pan. That'd be nice if he goes and has a drink around there, which would be quite good. I am listening out for Lex too. Lex is back on drive. Let me go forward for you. So he wants to come into the sighting and it would actually suit me a huge amount if he did come into the site and give us a helping hand and trying to to follow him let's go quickly go around i don't want to get lost behind him again i just have to find a gap no i think we can squeeze through there no we can't we're gonna go on the road and back in again Woo! okay so that's good we're not far from the pan gonna go in here you sort of we have to go a little bit of a way in go through that little mud wallow Woo! and now we carry on with our off-roading adventure yay it's not nice <laughs> off-roading like this it's very stressful I'm expecting a puncture at some point please don't break anything pretty please good rusty Oh, and thorns. The buffalo thorn and the knob thorns are a nightmare. And I can't see the leopard anymore. Please don't scratch me, please. Ow. Okay, we're through. Whew. That was tough. Can you see him yet, Seb? We should be coming out here somewhere. It was a risky maneuver that I did do, but I had to do it. I couldn't go and follow him. It was too thick. Oh no, don't. Not again. Okay, I've seen Lex. So he's, he's coming to help us. Let's just have a look. Lex, if you got my visual, I lost him somewhere around here. He was coming back up towards my vehicle. Um, but yeah, I haven't got visual of him just yet. Where did he go now? Hmm, this is a tough one. We're all just scanning around us now. Just making sure. Seb, it was about here that he was coming. Do you think he might already be further up? That's such a tough one to try. It's such a gamble. I don't think so though, because he's moving so slowly. I mean, the fact that he's only popped out here now. I want to turn the car and just see. I'm just going to talk to Lex very quickly. Lex, he was he was just in here and he, he changed direction. He was coming this way, but he's walking so slowly. So now I don't know where he is. <laughs> but hopefully we get him again because it's... Okay, great. So there we go. So we've got an extra pair of eyes and ears. So Lex is also going to drive in and look around. 
Let's just sit for a little bit. Oh, I can't believe I lost him. What a rookie error. I just couldn't go through that thick stuff again after what we went through about 25 minutes ago. Hmm. Okay, so Lex will go in over there. This way. I'm sure he's in here somewhere. Um, voila. You sneaky sausage. Got him. Yeah. Oh, he's sneaky. He is sneaky sausage. Lexi was right next to your vehicle. He's behind us. <laughs> cool. There we go. Have you got him? Are you keeping. Oh, there he is. <laughs> He's laying in the grass. He's laughing at both Lex and I. That is so great. Ah, that's so wonderful. <laughs> Talk about giving us the slip. <laughs> that's wonderful. It's so great. You've got to have a sense of humor. So I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and keep this side because I know Lex has often got keen photographic guests on his vehicle. So I just want to give them an opportunity. So we'll try and keep out of his way. I'm just going to turn the car slightly here. He's right next to the car. So Lex can then go behind me, or if he wants to go around, he can maneuver wherever he likes. It's very important that we make sure our visitors from all over the world have a fantastic experience. And of course, I want to make sure that you all have a fantastic experience too. But we've been lucky watching him the entire time. This is so great. Now, Bri, you've said that this is such a uh, he, well, he's got very uh, striking markings. He does, he's a beautiful cat. But like I said, you can just see, he looks, um, like I said, he, to, to me, he just doesn't look as athletic, you know, as Tingana does. Tingana's definitely a lot more muscly. He's not a small leopard and fauna. He's definitely quite big. And I can imagine in his prime, my goodness, he would have been a force to reckon with. And I still think he'll give the youngsters a hiding, though. He's past that. He doesn't seem to be too bothered. I think he's living the retirement life. He just wants to move in between and other leopards and not cause any trouble at all. But you'll see every now and then something grabs his attention. There are a lot of Franklins moving around, but I don't know if there's any Impala at the pan. We did see those ones just further and slightly west of the pan. But maybe he's uh, hearing them and he's around that side and he'll go around that side because he's changed direction completely now. Let's see, he's listening very carefully, but look at those ears. The flies have really bitten them and lots of ticks and things causing that. Bush mom, you said that you particularly like his serrated ears. Look at him, he's walking right next to me. This is so cool, I'm so lucky. This is now the second big cat encounter we've had today and it just shows you he walked there himself. I didn't tell him to go there. He was quite happy to walk right around the car, not bothered with our presence at all. And that's amazing. There are very few places in South Africa that you can get a leopard interaction like you do in the Sabi Sands. This has got one of the densest populations for these cats too. So you come here, and I'm not saying that you're guaranteed to see a leopard, but you've got a very, very good chance of seeing one. Whew, how great is that? I'm so excited. Now I'm going to let Lex go in front quickly. We'll let him have a view. He would have had quite a nice view there as he sort of walked past. He walked into a beautiful gap and then I'm sure everyone would have taken their sneaky photos. And I hope that you are also taking lots of screenshots as we sit and we enjoy the sighting. Remember to share them, hashtag Safari Live, or if you do have any questions for us, you can use that same hashtag. Okay, let's try and get up in front. Now that we've got someone following him from the back, it'll be much easier. Now, Colleen, you're wondering what does the word Mvula mean? Well, Mvula in many of the African languages means rain, which is quite cool. This is the same little gap we're going to go through. I'm so sorry. No, we're not. We're refusing. I can't go back that way. It's so thick. So we'll let Lex go and then we'll go back around again. It slightly opens up, so we'll have a nice chance. And while well, speaking of rain, these clouds don't look too promising either. It's very strange weather that we're having out here this afternoon quite miserable in fact windy it's not too cold yet Woo! my goodness that dove almost blew out of the sky there's a couple of doves and uh, they seem to get blown around with the wind okay let's go around Rusty I know I've taken you on serious adventures today so I'll be nice and we'll let Lex 
follow the cat and we'll take the scenic way around and try and find an easier way in. I don't want to bash you up too much. Got to be nice to the cars sometimes. I can't always kick their tires and drive them through the thick bush, but they are made for this though. These vehicles are rough and tough and they, they can quite easily maneuver through the stuff. It's quite nice that they're so small and they are nimble too, so you can squeeze through the gaps that a lot of the bigger vehicles can't, which is really quite nice. Makes it a lot easier for off-roading. Not necessarily more comfortable with the suspension, but definitely off-roading is quite nice. Okay, so they were just coming this way. We'll just keep an eye out for them from here. Try and navigate through some of these little thorns through here. Don't mind those thorns too much off the acacias. It's the ones like the buffalo thorn and the knob thorns that are hooked. Oh, terrible. Oh, he's going to come out here, I reckon. Sorry, Eve your hairs. Now we're on the road to Gallagher shortcut to the pad. So you should be in here. Yeah I can see Lex's car. Oh great. So we're just going to sit patiently now and wait for him to pop out and hopefully he goes straight towards the pad and has a nice drink for all of us. We can smile, we can take nice photos, we can do all these wonderful things. Let's just see if we can see him coming through this side. Isn't that amazing? I honestly started the safari this afternoon going, I actually had a bit of a negative attitude, I must be honest. I thought, oh, it's windy, and we're not going to see nice things, and, and all of this. Have you got the visual of the cat? Is, oh, there he is. Let me go forward and we'll line him up nicely. We'll get him coming straight towards us. He's just off there, well spotted. Um, so, and then we had the squirrel just before we went live, leaping off the tree, which was the most magnificent squirrel sighting I've ever had in my entire life and it was so dramatic especially because we were talking about flying squirrels this morning and um, so i thought that that was actually just so fitting there he is he's just in the distance and now just as the star show uh, star the show started now i'm doing spoonerisms and swapping my words right, around he um he popped out right in front of the car he's going to pop out again we just have to be patient and watch him he's just thinking let me go forward again Although, no, this is a nice gap if he does come to this termite mound. At least we'll have him out in the open. Here he comes. He's just where that fallen tree is. There we go. He's heading towards the termite mound. So, we know that the leopards at the moment are quite fond at checking in the termite mounds. And on a day like today, it wouldn't be a bad thing. Because it is windy, it is cold, the warthogs might be hiding out in their hidey holes. And if he sticks his head down a burrow, he could quite easily pull one out. And maybe that's what he's going to do. I'm going to go backwards for you, Seb. Is that right? You can stay like that. I'll oh, you just see a bit of a shadow. Don't worry. That's just me getting you guys a good spot. Oh, no. He's going to sit. Okay. I think we'll just watch him from here, though. We'll let we'll get Lex, Lex get a spot, and then we'll go in after him. We, yeah. So... We'll, we'll make sure they can get a nice view. Like I said, we've been so lucky and we do want to be courteous uh, to the people who have joined us and spent a large amount of money on coming on a safari. And we don't want to have too many cars moving around at once either. I always talk of this experiment we did where we laid down on the ground and we had three different vehicles driving around our heads. It was the most horrific experience. Okay, let's go in there. I think we can maybe find a better gap. So I couldn't hear anything and it was just great to sort of feel what the animals might be feeling and now you know our hearing is really terrible in comparison to these big cats. You learn very quickly how important it is just to limit the movement. They're very tolerant of us, they don't mind us following them through the bush, you've quite clearly seen that. We're going to go all the way around, we'll come around the other side and we have another gap and um, so he's very obliging. And we want to say thanks to that and give him the most pleasant experience. That's actually quite nice. I'm going to, I'll angle the car a bit better for you, Seb. How's that? How, how great is that? That is very, 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 very pretty to have a leopard sitting up on a termite mound next to a jackalberry. No, not even, no, it's not a jackalberry. I'm talking out of nonsense. It's a, a brachypetalus. A weeping bourbon. Beautiful. Hello, beautiful boy. And there it does look like there is a den of some sort around here too, at the base of the tree. Probably warthogs. Or maybe 
even a potential site for the hyenas. I don't know who's living in all these burrows. It's sometimes hard to, of course, keep track. But a lovely long tail is one of the most beautiful things, of course, about these big cats is their striking coloration. He is lovely. What a gorgeous animal. I'm glad we, we stuck with him and we didn't give up too soon because otherwise we would have missed this and who knows what we would be doing and we know Tingana was sitting in the long grass earlier and hopefully he'll wake up and start feeding. Any word on um, Ali's plans Alice? Has she decided is she going to go towards Chitwa? <clears throat> ah okay we're going to see what Ali's plans are for the afternoon. It would be nice if we could get Tingana again. Like I said, though, I'm holding on to the sighting for as long as possible. This is nice. I haven't been able to spend quality time with a leopard from, you know, finding it first go and then losing it and then finding it again. It's all very rewarding. So I think we've put in enough work to deserve a spot here for quite some time. But this is absolutely lovely. Very windy. And he looks like he's just taking a break now too. Hmm, okay, so it seems as though Ellie is also going to go to a spotted cat. She's going to head down back towards Tingana. It'll probably be easier for her to relocate on him, seeing as she knows uh, the exact spot that he was last seen in. But look at those flies on his ears. Can you see those little midge-like things? And those flies bite really, really sore. I saw a couple of them also flying around. Actually, I don't know if... Those are flies too. Oh, are they? They do look like it. Yeah, I can see their little wings sticking out. And they'll be drawing blood from Tingana. And I think he's just so used to it now he puts up with them. I wouldn't be. I'd be shaking my head all the time. It's quite terrible. And you'll know that if you've got dogs at home, the, dogs, uh, the flies do similar things to dogs' ears. I used to bite my horse's ears too. Wow, what a great day. I can't get over it. This is what you live for. This is what you wish every single safari is like. And it's sometimes nice when you don't have all the action every single day because you really then do appreciate a day's like uh, what we have. We have been lucky. Every day has been quite great in terms of sightings. Between the sightings between Ellie and I, we've seen an abundance of different creatures. Hey, boy. I just hope you don't go to sleep now. I hope you continue on with your, your missions. So peaceful, just the wind rustling. He's very eager to catch something. He's sort of like the Nkuhumas the other night. Every time they heard a noise, they would get up and walk towards it, hoping that it would be a potential meal. I think he's feeling the same kind of hunger. He doesn't really show it too much, though. Like I said, his stomach is slightly saggy. You can see all that extra skin. Normally when they do gorge themselves, they blow up like a balloon. Um, you can't see his ribs just yet or his vertebrae, so he's not, he's not dying for a meal. He'll still be okay for in probably another day or so. And it might take him another 24 hours before he even catches something. Sometimes it's just nice to sit quietly and just appreciate what we're actually looking at. And then I'm also just going to rub it in a little bit that this is my job. <laughs> hey Mvula, don't you think it's unfair that you and I just get to live in the bush our whole lives and do amazing things? You entertain me, I'm sure I entertain you sometimes. You probably laugh at me when you, when, well, when you give us the slip. And hopefully if you are watching at work, you're doing so and you're being sneaky and we're providing some entertainment to your day. Now, where did you go, young man? Where did you go? Mm, we've got to get out of here again. Oh, off he goes. Back towards the road and back towards the pan. He's just crossing now. 
we'll try and stick with them. I think I don't know how bad the off-roading is going to be through here. We do a little bit. Oh, we go good. Under there. Just watch that. Okie dokie, well, we're gonna keep bumbling about and try and get another view of Tangana, see where he goes. I'm gonna send you across to Ellie, who's on her way to, well, the king of Juma. <laughs>